Hello brothers and sisters. Um, a very um, a primary songwriter of his song go by, going by the name of Marty Samson. I think that's his real name, Marty Samson, um, renounced his faith. Um, you will remember that um, I did a video on Joshua Harris renouncing his faith um, about three weeks ago. And then now another Christian in a not so like in Hillsong, a Hillsong, in Hillsong United, decides to renounce his faith. Um, so Marty Samson, um, he posted on Instagram just like Joshua Harris did. He posted on Instagram and um, made that announcement there that he's renouncing his faith. Um, I did not know this guy um, until a dear brother of mine sent me this article on WhatsApp. I did not know um, Marty until then. But it's not surprising because you know the gospel that is being taught in Hillsong, right? As the article also says here that um, Hillsong does not have the best gospel. It has the diluted gospel, the gospel of prosperity, the gospel that um, misleads people, um, gives them false hope. So um, I was even shocked that Marty actually believed that there are people who are going to hell because that's one of the things that he mentioned on his post on Instagram. But I'm going to discuss that um, a little. Um, I'm going to discuss that in a minute. But... I just want to address this first, that um, it's it becomes clear and clear that people like Joshua Harris and Marty Samson, that they were never one of us. So they went out from us to make it clear that they were never one of us, because if they were part of us, if they were Christians, they would have stayed with us. So they keep on um, shifting from faith. Um, they're falling away one by one. And this guy here, he, he said something that is very interesting in this article. Um, he says that it's merely another drop in the bucket of God purifying his bride. And it's like we are fooled. We are full of these people who are false converts. Because um, if really, really these people are Christians, what's going on with them? It's like maybe this is a minor setback in their faith. But I was like, it was because Paul said that um, people like these um, will eventually fall away from faith. There's a scripture um, that he wrote to Timothy. When he wrote to Timothy, there's a verse that he said in, I think it's 2 Timothy. It's also here in this article. Let me just go down to it. It says, For time is coming when people will not endure the sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off in myths. Um, this is like what is happening in Hillsong. They don't preach the gospel. They preach what the people are itching to hear. And they tell people, they give people false hope. So it's it's not surprising that people who listen to false gospel and the things that are being they are being promised in those um in those churches do not come through. Because really, I mean, what can you expect like the things that they preach there? Because you see, while the believers having faith, the pastors get richer because that's more of like a that thing that thing is a business transaction. The things that is being preached in Hillsong, it's it's a business transaction and not just Hillsong in many more churches. There are more churches that preaches that, like Lakewood as well, Joel under Joel Austin. But it was very shocking. Um he mentions a lot of things here that he that is one of the reasons why he's falling away from his faith. He mentions preachers, many preachers that fall away. And no one talks about those things. He mentions, he says how many miracles happened. And he says not many. So I'm not sure when he says miracles. Um, whether he speaks about the miracles that are being. Um, the false miracles that are, they are being promised in Hillsong. Or he speaks about the miracles of God. The miracles that were performed. Miracles like those that were performed by the apostles. I'm really not sure what he's speaking about here. But... Um, he also mentions that the Bible is full of contradictions. Um, yes, this is a very interesting part. He says the Bible is full of contradictions. This is clearly someone who read the Bible and did not understand it. And then now he picks contradictions. And then this is the part that I was shocked that he believes in. Where he says, um, let me just highlight it so that when you read it, you can, you can see it. He says, how can, how can God be love yet send 4 billion people to a place all cause they didn't they don't believe 
So, so that's one of the reasons why he's leaving the faith because he doesn't like the fact that God is sending people to hell, people who did not believe in Jesus. Um, he does not understand that God said to Moses, I will not let the guilty go unpunished. So the guilty have to be punished for their sins. That's one of the things that he does not understand. He also does not understand that those who are in Christ, they are not condemned. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. They are justified. So because we are in Christ, firstly, God justifies us so he cannot judge us. Secondly, Christ died for us so he, also he cannot condemn us. And then thirdly, the devil has nothing on his fold. So even though he is the one who accuses us before God, he has nothing to say that, okay, they did this, they did that, they must be punished because Christ died for our sin and Christ made it clear that those whom the Father has given to me, I will lose no one. And also the writer of Hebrews, he says that um, our endurance is evidence that we have been saved. So these are the things that the gentleman here, Mr. Samson, or oh, Marty Samson, did not pick up or did not understand when he was reading the scriptures that the elects of God are not condemned. And God said that I will have mercy on whom I want to have mercy on. So you cannot corner God. You cannot put God in a corner about why, as to why are you sending people to hell? You cannot ask God that question. You cannot corner him. But apparently this gentleman is not happy with that. So, I mean, it, he, um, it's not surprising because the gospel that he was taught in Hillsong did not really explain those things to him. They only offered him what he wanted to hear. They only told him about the things of this world because that's what he wanted. I mean, the fact that he was aware that there are people who are going to hell, that means somewhere in his conscience, he was aware that um, he was aware that the gospel that was being taught there is not the genuine gospel, is not the real gospel. But it's not surprising that people like these fall away from faith. And he says, oh, another thing that he says that no um, Christians can be the most judgmental people. And that's one of the things that um, people do not understand when they, they always quote that verse in Matthew 7 verse 1 that Jesus said, do not judge others. So they always say Christians are judgmental. But Jesus also said, do not judge by appearance, but let your judgment be righteous. They always miss that verse. They don't understand that verse. But going back to the verse of Matthew 7 verse 1 up to verse 6, they will actually understand that Jesus did not say, do not judge us. Do not judge others. But actually what he meant is that do not be a hypocrite when you're judging others. Because on the verse that I've quoted on 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 4, is it 2 Timothy chapter 4? Let me just quickly, yeah, 2 Timothy chapter 4, 3 to 4. Paul started by saying that um, be ready in season and out of season to reprove, rebuke and exhort. Paul was giving Timothy authority to judge. And somewhere else in the book as well, Paul says that, um, the spiritual person judges all things, but he himself is not judged. So we are allowed to judge as Christians. We have that authority. So he says that um, Christians can also be, be the most beautiful and loving people, but it's not for me. I am, no, I am not anymore. I want genuine truth. Well, the genuine truth is Jesus. Jesus said he is the truth. So if he's looking for the genuine truth, he's walking away from it. The genuine truth that he's looking for it is the one that he's walking away from it so this was a very interesting thing because i mean not so long ago i did a video on joshua harris and then all of a sudden this comes up oh there's another thing he says that science keeps on piercing the truth of every religion that means um science keep on exposing that religions are false and that science is true so this guy is so, 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 so sure that science is right and um, Christianity is wrong. And the, the, the mistake that he makes is that he compares Christianity to other religions. That's the first mistake he makes. Is that he looked at other religions and he looked at Christianity and he was like, no, they are all the same. Well, he was mistaken. Christianity is different. All other religions say it's do, but Christianity says it's done. And that's what he does not understand. So... It, it becomes really interesting. It's really, really interesting. So, um, I'm sorry, I'm just reading the article. Let me, um,
So he speaks about not having one version of God. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of things that he says here. Um, he says I've got so much to say, but for me, I I keep I keeping it real. Unfollow me if you want. It's like he's telling those people who are following him, him following him, his fans of Christianity, or maybe his Christian friends to unfollow him. He does not care anymore. So Yes, this is the part where he says, be generous and do good to others. Absolutely. Some things are good no matter what you believe. Let the rain fall, let the sun come up. So he does not understand that our, um, he does not understand the fact that every part of us is tainted with sin to such, to such an extent that our good works are like filthy rags before God. Or maybe we can quote from, that was, um, that's in Isaiah 64 verse 7. Or maybe we can quote from Romans 3, where Paul says, no one is righteous, not even one. No one is seeking God, not even one. And then he moves on towards the end of the chapter. He says, They've, we've all sinned and fell short of the glory of God. So being good or doing good to others cannot, cannot score us a seat in heaven, cannot merit us the righteousness of God, cannot award us God's love. And what they do not understand is that truly God is love. I mean, the Bible makes it clear that God is love. But in in Corinthians, again, Paul makes it clear that love does not delight in, in what is wrong. And what they don't understand is that sin is wrong in the face, in the in, before the eyes of God. Sin, sin is a very, very thing that God hates. But they do not understand. But this guy um this is what i wanted to address this is this is this is this is shocking this is this is really surprising that these prominent guys the guys who are up there like joshua harris and this guy they keep on falling away from faith i feel like we're gonna see more of this i feel like we're gonna see more of these guys falling away but anyway this is what i wanted to share with you brothers and sisters um yeah this is what I wanted to share with you. So I think I've covered everything on this guy's. Um, I think I've covered everything on his, but it says uh, it's just the article, but it says bottom line when Christianity is used as means to gain the world, it ends up being a means to lose your soul. And that's true because you see, if you chase the things of the world, if you go after the things of the world, then that's what you're going to get. You're going to get your reward now, but you're not going to get another one in heaven. But if you seek the kingdom of God first, and then all shall be added later. So this is what people do not understand, that it shall be added, but seek the kingdom first. But what do they do? They seek the things of the world first, hoping that the kingdom will be added. And that's their mistake. But anyway... So yeah, but he goes on to say, um, he speaks very clearly about people like Samson. Samson is clearly, cl Samson clearly was not interested in sound teaching, but desired to use it as, yeah. So he was not, mm, he was not interested in sound teaching because I mean, this guy is, I'm sure he knows about the other pastors that are sound in YouTube or in America as a whole, in the United States as a whole. He knows about them. If he really was seeking the truth, just like he's saying that he's seeking the genuine truth, he would have went after those guys to teach him the truth. I mean, the Bible, he had the Bible. He says the Bible contains contradictions. Uh, that means he has the Bible. He could have read the Bible and he could have asked from God the spirit of wisdom to guide him or the spirit of God or the Holy Spirit of God to guide him. But anyway, this is what I wanted to share with you guys. This is what I wanted to speak about that um let's hold fast to our faith let's hold the confidence that we had in the beginning until the end because it is the evidence that we are truly saved if we end you until the end thank you very much